Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be covering a super controversial ingredient, DMDM hydantuin. If you're not aware, Unilever is currently facing a lawsuit alleging that their Tresemme Keratin Smooth Color Shampoo caused irritation and hair loss in, in people, and that they failed to warn people that the ingredient DMDM hydantuin, a formaldehyde releaser, could cause these alleged side effects that people are experiencing. You know, over the years, I've gotten a lot of requests to talk about this ingredient. People are worried about it fearful is it to is it a toxin is it safe is it gonna make our skin melt off so hopefully in today's video I will clarify what it is and what you need to know about it if you're new here welcome my name is Andrea I am a board certified dermatologist and I would love it if you would subscribe to my youtube channel and give this video a thumbs up if you like evidence-based ingredient reviews when people hear formaldehyde releaser it evokes terror and fear what exactly is formaldehyde? Formaldehyde is a colorless gas. It's ubiquitous in our environment. I mean, there's a very good chance today you were exposed to formaldehyde. It's present in uh, car exhaust and tobacco smoke. So if you sat in traffic or you walked through a, an area where somebody had lit up a cigarette, you were exposed to formaldehyde. It's also present in clothing, textiles, uh, paints, you can also find formaldehyde in formaldehyde resins and plastics and plastic bottles. So even if something is labeled formaldehyde free, the bottle that it's in might not be formaldehyde free. Uh, formaldehyde is naturally present in foods like uh, my, my favorite natural food, instant coffee. Uh, but it's also present in codfish and uh, maple syrup as well as smoked ham. Of course, formaldehyde can be a carcinogen and can have adverse effects on human health, but as with everything in medicine, it's not the poison, it's the dose. When formaldehyde comes in contact with the skin, there are some adverse side effects that can occur in some people, namely irritant contact dermatitis. That's gonna be an irritating rash wherever formaldehyde touches the skin. Irritant contact dermatitis from formaldehyde is more likely if the formaldehyde is at a higher concentration. Uh, you can also develop an allergy to formaldehyde. That is relatively common. Um, and then there are reports of uh, contact on the skin with formaldehyde causing hives, which are these itchy uh, welts, as they're referred to commonly, that come and go, and you know they're made worse by the action of scratching and heat. They're pesky and they're treated with antihistamines. Um, so basically, formaldehyde can cause contact dermatitis or contact urticaria in some people, not everybody, um, and, and it depends on the concentration. It also it can cause mucosal irritation if you inhale it. Um, but what about formaldehyde releasers? What the heck are these? Why are they in products? Formaldehyde releasers are preservatives. If you guys are new here, um, I am a fan of preservatives in skincare products. They keep bad stuff out like pseudomonas and fungi. Formaldehyde releasers are pretty broad spectrum biocides and how they work is that slowly over time they release very small amounts of formaldehyde into the product to act as a preservative. They're actually very good preservatives and they've been used in personal care products forever. Like formaldehyde, formaldehyde releasers can cause problems for some people. Some people can develop an allergy to them. People who already have an allergy to formaldehyde are more likely to develop an allergy to formaldehyde releasers, but you don't necessarily have to have formaldehyde allergy to develop an allergy to a formaldehyde releaser. DMDM Hydantuin is not the only formaldehyde releasing preservative in personal care products. You also have quaternium 15, you have imid azolidinyl urea, you have diazolidinyl urea, and you have 2-bromo, 2-nitropane, 1,3-diol, aka bronopol. Um, and then of course, DMDM Hydantuin. There are many others, but these are some of the more common formaldehyde releasing preservatives. So are they problematic? They can be for some people. Some people can develop an allergy to them. Um, this is more common in people who have eczema or atopic dermatitis. People with eczema, they are more likely to develop allergies to many things, you know, any, any ingredient in a personal care product. It's not exclusive to DMDM Hydantuin by any means. Uh, some people can also develop irritation to products that have DMDM Hydantuin in them or any formaldehyde releaser. Now, folks who have a pre-existing allergy or sensitivity to formaldehyde are more likely to have issue with formaldehyde-releasing preservatives. 
Here's the thing though, for people who do develop allergy to formaldehyde releasing preservatives, it's not always the formaldehyde. Sometimes it's the base of the preservative that the individual is allergic to. So it has nothing to do with the formaldehyde per se. Um, but yes, people can and do develop an allergy to DMDM hydantoin all the time. And you know, is it the most common allergy out there to ingredients? Heck no. How do you know if you're allergic to it though? You could be alert, like I said, you could be allergic to anything in a skincare or hair care or personal care product. How do you know it's a DMDM hydantoin? The way to know that is to see a board certified dermatologist who does patch testing, which is kind of like sleuthing around to find out what ingredient you have become allergic to. Um, and as far as I understand it, none of the individuals in this uh, case have at least come forth saying that they had patch testing and were found to be allergic to DMDM hydantoin. Now that's not to say that they couldn't have developed irritation to it, um, but there's no, there's no talk of patch testing to confirm allergy or sensitivity to DMDM hydantoin. So we don't really know that it's that at all that caused problems for these people. Furthermore, another issue with this case is that um, contact dermatitis to a preservative like DMDM hydantoin, it's not going to present with hair loss. I mean, that's, that's almost unheard of. Instead, what you're going to have is you're going to have a dermatitis um, uh, localized most often to the eyelids, to the hairline, and to like the backs of the ears. This, this is where we see the skin manifestations of contact dermatitis to an ingredient in shampoos and conditioners, for example. Most often, it's not hair loss. People who are sensitive to formaldehyde, oftentimes they do just fine with formaldehyde releasing preservatives like DMDM hydantoin in shampoos and conditioners because they are A, at you know, low, low concentration and B, they're being rinsed off the skin. They're not being left on the skin. So, you know, one potential explanation is perhaps people who are sensitive to it in this case, uh, maybe it doesn't rinse out particularly well. It's being left in contact with the scalp for too long and causing irritation for people who have a sensitivity to it. But again, we don't know if these people are sensitive to it or not. They could be sensitive to something else in the product. You can become sensitized to any ingredient in any product you know, at any time. And in this particular product, this Tresemme one under scrutiny, there are other ingredients in there that, you know, raise an eyebrow as potential allergens for people. Methyl isothiazolinone, a very, very common preservative that people often, more often than DMDM hydantoin, become allergic to. And it also has fragrance, another common skin allergen. So there's some other potential offenders if these people did in fact, or do in fact, have contact sensitivity to these ingredients. But as I said, it's not the type of thing that's going to present with hair loss. DMDM hydantoin, as well as other preservatives, in the personal care industry and hair care industry. They have been used in these products for decades and decades and decades. There is absolutely no scientific evidence that these ingredients cause hair loss. Um, so, you know, it's hard to, there's really no, this, this, this case is really just not valid. You're not ne never gonna be able to show that DMDM hydantoin was responsible for the hair loss of these, of these individuals claiming so. It's just not, not the case. Hair loss is a complicated issue. There are many causes of hair loss. And another thing about this case that I have not seen is do any of these people have a true diagnosis of their hair loss? Hair loss, you know, it's, it's kind of a subjective complaint at this point. Uh, hair thinning, hair loss. Is it breakage? Is it um, scarring hair loss? I have not seen any information provided that these individuals saw a board certified dermatologist, underwent a scalp exam, and or had a scalp biopsy, blood work, to work up their hair loss to get a diagnosis. Um, you know, for example, right now, as in the world that we're living in, very, very stressful times, and we are seeing in dermatology a substantial uptick in the number of cases of a type of hair loss called telogen effluvium. Basically, three months after stress, your hair starts shedding. I've got videos explaining this in detail. But we are seeing a lot of that right now, and we have been, um, you know, throughout 2020. 
and we attribute it to the current pandemic, either as a result of just the psychosocial stress of everything that's going on and or people who actually ha were ill. Uh, you know, it's not uncommon after having a viral illness to develop hair shedding. So there are a few reasons why we might be, you know, these people might have hair shedding or maybe they have, an, you know, there's so many types of hair loss, you guys, that to just say, I've been using this shampoo and now I've got thinning hair, hair loss, bald patches. It must be the shampoo. It must be this ingredient. Yeah, I mean, you really can't say that without, without a true workup um, and, and patch testing to confirm that you have a sensitivity. And even if you are sensitive to that ingredient, then this presentation of hair loss is very unlikely. Unless, as I said, the product does not rinse out particularly well. It's being left on the skin for a prolonged period of time, causing so much irritation to the scalp that these people are getting hair loss as a result of, of the product just not rinsing out. That, that is something that you have to think that you know could be going on for sure. DMDM Hydantoin is not the devil. It's not a dangerous ingredient, but like any ingredient, you can become allergic to it. Who's more at risk for becoming allergic to it? People with eczema, because they're at risk for becoming allergic to pretty much you know, anything in personal care products as a result of their disease process. It's an impaired skin barrier. They're just more likely to develop sensitivities to things that come in contact with the skin. And people who have a lot of occupational exposures, um, namely hairdressers, because they have their hands in the shampoo, they're more likely to develop a sensitivity to DMDM hydantoin, and that's gonna present as a hand dermatitis in those folks because they're not, you know, maybe rinsing it off as much. They've got prolonged contact with the allergen. So it's, it's actually more of a problem if you are a hairdresser, you know, you shampoo people's hair for a living. And that's that's going to be the group of people who are more likely to be affected by this ingredient. Do they even use Tresemme in salons? I don't know. Um, but yeah, um, long story short, you guys, I would not I would not lose sleep over the presence of DM, DM Hydantoin unless you are allergic to it. If you're allergic to it, if you have a patch test confirmed allergy or sensitivity to it, then avoid it. But to just make a blanket statement that it's a dangerous ingredient and you know fear monger around it is not necessary. And it does have a good function, you know, it's a functional ingredient. It keeps the product safe. Did Unilever fail their customers? No, they disclosed the presence of the ingredient on the label as they're supposed to so that people with an allergy to it know to avoid it. Just like they disclosed the presence of fragrance and methyl isothiazolinone on the ingredient list so people with allergies to those ingredients can avoid it. Um, so they, in my opinion, they have done nothing wrong. There is no scientific evidence that DMDM hydantoin causes hair loss. And while it can cause irritation and or contact allergy in some people, uh, those people have to read ingredients. You know, it's, it, it, you know, just like some people have celiac disease and cannot ingest gluten, uh, they have to read ingredient labels very carefully to make sure there's no, nothing in there that's gonna cause, you know, that has gluten in it. Um, but basically, you know, manufacturers, they don't have to put on their label, warning celiacs, they don't. Um, so, you know, in my opinion, Unilever has done the nothing wrong. And in these, in these lawsuits, there's always, there's always a gap in knowledge, for sure. There, there's no medical evaluation, or at least, you know, that is revealed. Maybe that's some kind of privacy thing that we just never know about. Um, but it would be nice to know, like, if these cases have biopsy-confirmed types of hair loss due to irritation or something like that, but we don't have that information. And of course, the other group of people who are more likely to have issues with DMDM hydantoin and other formaldehyde releasers are people who are already sensitive to formaldehyde um, because, you know, it, you know, with time, it releases low levels of formaldehyde. So those folks are more likely to have an issue. If you do have a formaldehyde allergy though, you've gotta be careful of a lot more than Tresemme. Uh, there are a lot more things that you're gonna be exposed to that could cause problems for you, like textiles. You know, a lot of permanent press clothing has formaldehyde in it. We tell those patients who have uh, allergy to formaldehyde to wash their clothes several times before wearing new clothes. You know, when they get new clothes, to wash them several times to dilute out the formaldehyde in, in those types of textiles to reduce the issues of dermatitis forming. You can get rashes like 
uh, you know, in the kind of armpit area where the clothing is rubbing and in close proximity to the skin. Um, so yeah, I mean, the other group, you know, it's more, it's more of a risk in people with occupational exposures, like painters, photographers, who are, you know, coming in contact with inks and developing solutions and whatnot. They have prolonged contact with their hands. And I, you know, they're all factors you have to take into account when evaluating somebody with a potential allergy to any of these allergens is, you know, rel clinical relevance, which we don't have in this, this lawsuit. So, you know, to me, it's kind of BS. And I'm sure that nothing will come of it. Uh, just, you know, a lot of time and energy. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I mean, we saw that with the talc case. We saw that with the diva curl scandal. They don't ever amount to anything because there's a significant gap in knowledge. And you know, I, it, it is what it is. I'm not a lawyer and uh, comment below, those of you in the legal field, what are your thoughts on this? I would love to know. Uh, but I hope this video is informative to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.